you're watching Global News Morning on Global Kingston. Well, good morning. Oh, I'm getting it wrong. Here we go. Good morning, everyone. This is the second annual International Day of Sign Language, and I'd like to welcome you uh, to the station now to advocates for ASL, that's American Sign Language. They're here to tell us about why they feel it's so important for toddlers to have access to this type of language. Good morning. Good morning. This is Good Jessica morning. and Teresa. So you have first-hand knowledge, Jessica. You were born deaf. You found out when you were six years old that you couldn't hear. What was your childhood experience like? So my language was significantly delayed at age six, and that continued on for another five years. I did wear hearing aids growing up, but I had no linguistic benefits, even though I wore them every waking hour. Mm -hmm. So that led to language deprivation. That stopped when I enrolled at the deaf school at age 11. I was able to catch up on my linguistics and language there because ASL is a visual language and it was fully accessible for me to comprehend and learn. And Teresa, you have a similar experience. Yes, it's very similar. I was born deaf but I had no idea what sound was like until three when I had my first hearing aids but I couldn't understand what I was listening to. I had no comprehension of it. Comprehension of it. When I was four, I said my first word, which was push, and that's when I realized the connection between the word and the concept. So language acquisition was a, con a challenge for me. Um, and as well as lip reading being very challenging because of the diversity of mouths that I would see. I was mainstreamed with no interpreter. So when I was 14, I then began going to a deaf school where I learned ASL, and I was able to catch up on my language. I'm very grateful to ASL. It's opened the world to me and gave me the concepts. Without that, I would be pretty much like a parrot. So because of your experiences, you feel strongly that toddlers, youngsters who are deaf, should have access to American Sign Language to help them Communicate. Yes. Um, language deprivation is a global social issue. A very serious issue for those deaf children. You can't guarantee that spoken language will be accessible. Many people have the idea that you don't need ASL for deaf children. And I've been trying to figure out why uh, they have this concept and it's because there is the ideology that the only way to c acquire language is through speech and listening. So I tried to come up with a creative way to address the seriousness of language deprivation. So I thought I would show videos of deaf babies signing um, and just to show how important it is to have access from birth to ASL to avoid language deprivation. And we're taking a look at one of those videos now. This is little baby Isla, and her family has been signing with her. It's a family affair. Tell me about her success. On Facebook, she has had a very positive impact to 10 million people. Many people globally have inquired how they can learn and where they can learn their national sign languages. There's been several positive comments in relation to Ayla, how she's so inspirational, she's positive, provides a lot of hope. Uh, many people are very impressed with her abilities. I, I'm very appreciative and applaud the success on Facebook, but I'd like to see it transferred over to mainstream media, which hasn't happened yet. Um, so that people can see, more people are able to see Ayla's story. Okay, and it isn't just Ayla that you've worked with, you've worked with a little girl named Sierra as well, who has also shown a lot of promise with her language development. Yes, that's very true, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. There she is. And, and she's out doing this in the community. We saw a picture. She was in a restaurant. She's back at home. And she's really conversing with family and, and anyone telling them what she needs. Just like any other toddler. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Now, Teresa, you have taken a different approach, but still just as impactful. You have, uh, you're part of a production company. It's, it's a theater company where you tell stories about uh, deaf language acquisition. Tell me about your story. And I'm thrilled to say that Deaf Spirit Theater will be involved with Culture Days this Saturday, September 28th. Ayla presents Deaf Spirit Theatre, so we will be doing ASL stories, some skits, we have some videos to share, which will all be done within by using American Sign Language. Okay, so Ayla is a part of this theatre production too. In a way, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Partly. 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 Uh, it's just the video meet Ayla only. Okay. What can, so this is taking place this Saturday at uh, two library branches in Kingston. Yes. One will be at the main library downtown and the other will be at the Isabel Turner Library um, later in the afternoon. Um, the library has partnered with Deaf Spirit Theatre in order to to provide this. Okay. What do you hope people will learn or, or take from watching this production? Well, just to learn and understand that deaf is the first language uh, for, ASL is the first language for deaf people to acquire uh, for youth and it's so vital during that time period. Uh, as people are aware, the window between zero to five is so key and to have only access to spoken language means that visually that window is closing to acquire ASL. So by having exposure in that key age, then they'll be able to fully develop their language as they grow. Okay, and I want to point out with these youngsters, their families can hear. So the family is learning ASL along with their child. Yes, that's right, yeah. Um, parents of deaf children, uh, those parents are learning sign language uh, through support from the deaf community. Uh, and the deaf community can be involved in that to support the family and help them learn ASL to ensure access for the children. Access to American Sign Language is not the best right now, and that's just because the medical model within the system, it's focusing on the ear and assistive technology and not so much focusing on the language acquisition. They're thinking that speech and sound are the only way to learn to communicate. So we need a shift through human rights to ensure that all children have access to sign. It doesn't matter. Uh, they should have access to all language that they require, whether it be a sign language or verbal, but they need access to both. Without access to a sign language, learning speech is much more difficult. I wouldn't want the same experience for somebody when I was young. There was, I wasn't involved in the community. I had no language. I want full language access for children so that they can be involved uh, with the community and have those skill, social skills, the literacy skills, cognitive and literacy abilities as well because without language it's a struggle to be able to develop those you're very isolated so and I don't want to see another child go through the same thing as me I'd, I'd like to see them to be success language deprivation is very painful and it has lifelong impacts so it's important to ensure providing language spoken or sign equally uh, to provide to the children. All right, very interesting. And again, today is the second annual International Day of Sign Language. We know about the event taking place at the library on September 28th. Quickly, is there anything taking place to mark today in Kingston? Well, recently, June 
of this year, Bill C-81, the Accessible Canada Act, received royal assent. So that includes the recognition of ASL, LSQ, Langsing Quebecois, and ISL, Indigenous Sign Languages, as the primary languages of deaf Canadians. So we would like the city of Kingston to follow the federal government's lead, and that includes providing opportunities for deaf people around the city. Thank you very much for your time. We're back after this.